Hello everybody and welcome to my third advanced Excel tutorial and this tutorial is going to teach you how to use pivot tables. Now pivot tables in my opinion um, and I'm sure many other people uh, follow this opinion as well are the best feature that Excel has has to offer. Um, and if you disagree with this, then then feel free to write which feature you, you think is better in the in the comments, um, uh, and I'll I'll disagree. <laughs> uh, and uh, but es essentially, they're just they're so quick, they're so easy, they just make sense, um, and people can just understand them how to use them really really easily. Um, so they're very 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 powerful. Um, you creating them yourself, however. Um, requires quite a few really really important rules so let's get into it so the first important rule is the way in which your structure is set out I'm going to zoom out a bit here so we can see more of it at once so you see here that this is your kind of standard Excel spreadsheet um, and in order for a pivot table to work you have to have a table and that means having um, a section uh, a, a range where the top um, entries are the names of each of the columns um, and these names all have to be unique you can't have two names the same um, and every column has to have an entry in it so you can't have, so if say I inserted a column here, you can't do that, you need to get rid of that one. Um, if you want need any blank columns, then just name them kind of blank one, blank two, but at least give them a name, um, else pivot tables won't work. So this is some random data, um, I've just gone through and made it myself, um, if you want to join along there's loads of random kind of just google random um, random data tables um, this is for this one I've used sales so here I've got a list of customers um, here I've got the sales references I've got uh, I've got 376 of them um, then got customer name I've got hometown, date of birth, and sex, um, which I've cross-referenced from this table using a VLOOKUP. Uh, if you're unsure how to use a VLOOKUP, then watch the intermediate tutorials. Um, sorry, but I just heard my next door neighbour drilling and it scared the life out of me. <laughs> um, so I've got the customer name, hometown, date of birth, uh, sex or gender, um, the date of the sale, I guess, uh, the cost per unit, the amount of units, um, the total cost of the sale, so that's just a formula that times that by that, um, and then also the year of the sale. So for this I've just done a formula of year and then highlighted the date. Um, looking at that, I don't really like how way that formula is looking, it should be uh, equals year and then... F2 um, rather than a um, rather than having the whole column because that's just messy right so that's our data table so how do we turn this into a pivot table um, most of you have probably asked me what even is a pivot table um, so I'm just going to give myself some more room by taking off the drawing bar and the uh, control toolbox. So it's a bit more space. So, in order to start a pivot table, highlight the table. So highlight all the columns. Go to data, pivot table, and pivot chart report. And then the pivot table wizard will appear. Um, always start off with a pivot table. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother starting off with a pivot chart because you can create a pivot chart from a pivot table so you're better off working out how your pivot table wants to look and then creating the chart now you can do this from the uh, Microsoft Excel list or database so that's what I want to do on this one because I'm using an Excel list you can use external data sources 
um, and you can reference another pivot table so I'll show you how to do that in a different tutorial so now just click on the top one Microsoft Office Excel list or database click next where is the data that you want to use so I've already highlighted the data so just just check that it's it's highlighting everything we want so sales so we're on sales A to J brilliant okay that's what we want click next and where do you want to put your pivot table so you can put it within the same worksheet or what I normally do is put on a new worksheet and then just click on finish and then you will come in and you will get a couple of toolbars I don't want to get rid of this one so you've got a list now of all of your column names and then you see here that you've got a section or page that you can drop data items into um, and you also notice that I've it's gone onto a new sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename the sheet to pivot, um, just so I know which which um, sheet my pivot table's in. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in sales ref into the data items. So you've got four different sections you can drop stuff into. So I'm going to drop it into data items um, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to drop it back out. It's just so you can see that you've also got a drop row fields, column fields and page fields. So page fields I'll come on to later but basically your row f this pivot table is going to create you, as you probably guessed, a table. And these are going to be the names of the rows of your table these are going to be the names of the columns of your table and then in here you're going to have the data that's in that table so say we put sales ref in here we haven't given any criteria for rows we haven't given any criteria for columns and so it's just in here it's counted up how many sales there are in total 376 so that's right now say we want to put something here so say we want to see how many sales there are per customer. So we'll drag this over here and then this is going to show us each customer um, and then how many sales they've done. So I'll just show you that again. So you click on the field you want in here, drag it across and you'll see that you've got a little hash line and it's flipping between the different things as you move them. So if I put it there, it would go to the columns. If I put it there, it will go to the rows. And if I put it there, it will add another data item in here, which I'm not going to go into yet. So let's put it in rows, and then it will count automatically how many sales there have been for each of these customers. Um, now, say we want to then push it across the top. So we want to go okay so I'm, I'm happy with the customers down the side now I want to put the year across the top so we put in year and you'll see that automatically um, and I'll close this off for now automatically it's worked out for each customer and each year exactly how many sales there have been for each one um, You'll also notice that you've got drop down menus now. So you have customer name, click on the drop down menu, and you can just tick the people you want to see. So say I want to compare Clinton to Cody, tick, and then it's just going to show me, okay, Cody, very consistent customer, very happy with them. Clinton, not such a good customer, so not really bothered about him. Um, and you can also do the same for year, so let's say we want to watch. 2000, 2002, 2003, 2004 and then we'll just get a breakdown for these. And you notice that Clinton is such a bad customer he hasn't had any sales for these years so he drops off of the table completely um, and that's what will happen if they don't match on uh, either of them is it just won't show them. So if we put in a few more years um, let's put these ones in as well then you'll show that Clinton's shown up because he's in 1996 we want to show them all again, just show all. You can also, if you don't want to do it on the drop down, you can just highlight things, click on hide, and it will hide them as well. And to get them back, just go in here and show all again. Um, 
So that's the basics of making a pivot table. Um, I'm going to continue going into pivot tables because there's so much more you can do with them um, in the next tutorial. So thanks for listening and I hope to catch you soon.